Wow. Watch us go. Hello. Good morning, did I? Good morning, Weevil. Now all we need is some spooky background music while I read. Hi, Shadows. <laughs> you got Fillion, Henya, and Iron Mouse in there. Why does it not surprise me, Weevil? 
What do you guys think about this creepy music? Does it work? Turn it down a little. But does that work? <laughs> Do I work? Are you sure? I don't know. Let's, uh, move myself. There. Is that better? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Should I be worried that I... That sounds like something scary. Bigger in this case is always better, okay. <gasps> Alright. Good. <laughs> fair enough did i fair enough okay this is a good mix between my voice and the music it's gonna change there's 34 songs that are apparently copyright free so can you not hear it you guys can't hear it I must mean it's not up high enough. Can you hear now? <laughs> oh my god, did I? Do you hear it now? You guys are ridiculous. I appreciate you guys, but you're ridiculous. <laughs> if it's spooky music, it's coming from me. Do you hear it now? Okay. <laughs> is it too loud or is it okay? I had it way down and apparently you guys couldn't hear it at all. Okay, but is it gonna be okay if I start reading stories? I mean, do you want me to use my spooky voice or my normal voice? Spooky voice? It's story time! <laughs> Exactly. Except apparently I'm now reading the side of the thing. 
and it says that I have to ask them privately if I can share their stories. So we're going to have to go somewhere else. I was going to use Reddit, but apparently you can't do that. Apparently. I guess I'll have to read stuff like... Like this stuff. Spooky scary stories instead of spooky scary skeletons? Okay. If I talk a little lower like this, can you guys still hear me? There should be, like... Can you guys still hear me if I talk like this? <laughs> My spooky voice? I'm not really sure what my spooky voice is, to be fair. These are stories that it says you can read for free, but they're like dumb. No offense, but <laughs> I want spooky stories. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh, those are actual stories. Okay. No, no. No, no, no. Okay. As long as you know it. Uh. Okay. It's nice to have the confirmation that you're crazy. You're welcome then, did I? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's 
Mm. Are you sure the music isn't too loud? I feel like it's loud as fuck in my ears, but... Hi, mutant. I'm okay, how are you? <laughs> oh my god, did I? <laughs> you and your Resident Evil. Maybe I should just find a book and like, I have scary story books. Maybe I should just find one of those and read these scary stories out of it. <laughs> it's a life choice. Like, isn't good. You got a cold or what? I'm sorry. I have that one, actually. Give me two seconds. Let me see if I can find it real fast. I think I know where it is. And if it's right next to me like I think it is, then I'll just read you out of that. How about that? Let me just look real fast because I think it's literally right next to me. Just give me one second. Hi, Karen. Give me one sec.
Okay, chat, we have the slight problem of I have no fucking idea where the book is. <laughs> I thought that it was in the thing beside me, but it's not. So, um, I love those books. It is odd because that definitely shouldn't be a kid's book. Let me see if I can like actually find like a... Some of those stories are fucking terrifying. Yeah, by Alvin Short. Honestly, in my opinion, I think that you should be able to read a story online, even if it's copyright protected, by just saying this is the name of the story this is the author of the story and that should be enough if i'm literally shouting out the person you know so i feel like that's how it should go but oh my god is it actually in a Ooh. hold on guys i might be able to oh shit I should have thought of this before I decided to do this because I thought I could just find some online because people do it all the time. Yeah, me too. Me too, Weevil. Me too. I wonder if I could just find some of the stories. Let me see if it all... Some people might have uploaded them online. I don't know. Oh God, I can't read like that. Ooh, the Viper. I love the Viper, that one's funny. uploaded but like whoa <laughs> whoa the viper your mom read them to you oh okay, so that's just him talking about oh my god the big toe oh my god please tell me you guys have heard you know what fuck it if you haven't heard the big toe you're, you're about to i'm gonna read it to you you guys want me to turn the music down? Or is it okay? Apparently you guys couldn't hear it. The viper has come to fish watch window. <laughs> it's okay for now? Okay. So if I keep... If I, if I talk a little bit lower like this, can you still hear me? Oh, the white satin evening gown. Oh my god. I remember those. <laughs> Did I hear you gonna survive? <laughs> I don't know if Dada's gonna survive. <laughs> or Annie. My fate is yet to be determined to God. Okay, give me one second, guys. I'll be right back. I get you that, eh? Makes sense.
Wait, what happened to Annie? Like the VTuber Annie? Oh, why? Um, hi there, Soregi. Sorry, I do not speak your language, only English here. I feel like the music is so loud. Are you guys sure it's not too loud? I feel like this isn't very horror y. It is kind of loud? Okay, hold on. My cats have lost their mind. Is that better? Are you good? Queasy! Queasy? Are you queasy? <laughs> She's looking at me like, what the fuck? I kind of like this one too. Oh my god. Okay, but were there nipples? Because if there was nipples, then that's why. Because you're not supposed to be showing that. In my opinion, if you're gonna be like, it's fine to test things or whatever out to see like what's gonna happen, but oh, did they? I mean, I get it for like artists and stuff. It's fine, but crazy. I was crazy once. <laughs> okay, is that better? Is this the new the new change though, right? Hi, Gimel. You're not new here, but hi. Thanks for the head pad. Okay. <clears throat> I know I said I was going to read you guys the big toe, but I decided that I'm going to read Me Tai Do Tai Walker instead because that one scared the bejesus out of me when I was little. So I'm just going to highlight it because it's really fucking hard to see. Which one's what? Did I? You are not fucking new here. <laughs> How's it going, Gimel? It's a 360 degree change. I mean, true. But you're not new here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, Weevil. <laughs> when did you become a dad? <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> I'm okay, thanks, Gimel. Um, we're I'm trying to knock down stuff that I we did for goals wise with the subathon. Um, so reading spooky stories was one of them, but I didn't realize that you can't read Reddit Reddit stories unless you get permission. So. Um, I was just going to go find a spooky book that I have and realized I can't do that either because I don't know where the book is. But then I found the book online. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, so this one, where's the music go now? Hold on. Hello? I'm probably going to have to keep going back and forth. Stop with the randomly... There we go. Okay. So this one is Mitai Dotai Walker. 
There was a haunted house where every night a bloody head fell down the chimney. At least, that's what people said. So nobody would stay there overnight. Then a rich man offered $200 to whoever would do it. And this boy said he would try it if he could have his dog with him. So it was all settled. The very next night, the boy went to the house with his dog. To make it more cheerful, he started a fire in the fireplace. Then he sat in front of the fire and waited, and his dog waited with him. For a while, nothing happened. But a little after midnight, he heard someone singing softly and sadly off in the woods. The singing sounded something like this. Me Tai Do Tai Walker. It's just somebody singing, the boy told himself. This music is haunted. Stop turning yourself up. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. The music is haunted. Uh, but he was frightened. Then his dog answered the song. Softly and sadly, it sang Linchi Kinchi Kali Molly Dingo Dingo. The boy could not believe his ears. His dog had never uttered a word before. Then a few minutes later, he heard the singing again. It was closer and louder, but the words were the same. Me Tai Do Tai Walker. This time, the boy tried to stop his dog from answering. I lost my spot, sorry. He was afraid that whoever was singing would hear it and come after them. But his dog paid no attention, and again it sang... Lin Chi Kin Chi Kali Molly Dingo Dingo. A half hour later, the boy heard the singing again. It was in the backyard, and the song was the same. Me Tai Do Tai Walker. Again, the boy tried to keep his dog quiet, but the dog sang louder than ever. Lin Chi Kin Chi Kali Molly Dingo Dingo. <laughs> Not just less sick, I just had to find my spot. Then the boy heard the singing again. Now it was coming down the chimney. Me Tai Do Tai Walker. See, it's it's haunted. My my music is haunted. The dog sang right back. Linchi Kinchi Kali Molly Dingo Dingo. Suddenly a bloody head fell out of the chimney. It missed the fire and landed right next to the dog. The dog took one look and fell over dead from fright. The head turned and stared at the boy. It slowly opened its mouth and... Ah! <laughs> Something in the story wants to catch hands. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Not me. I'm sorry you're having a bad day, mutant. That sucks. Let me see if I can find... Ooh. An hour. Of royalty-free music. Okay. What's one of my other favorite ones? Ooh. No, that one's freaky. Mm -mm. The White Wolf. Hold on. See what else we got here, chat. <laughs> Killing my dog, I know, right? How rude. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Oh, dude. This is cool. Okay, well now I can actually see the book like it's in front of me. Holy shit, that's a little too zoomed in. Uh... Oh, I didn't realize there was a Wendigo one. You guys want to hear the Wendigo one?
I didn't realize there was a Wendigo one. What, a Wendigo? Yeah, they're pretty spooky. I mean... I, I guess. I don't know. I've never seen one. Don't know that I want to. <laughs> also, for any of you that were here yesterday, I believe I fixed the issue where you couldn't see what was hitting me when you threw something at me. I think I fixed it. I don't know why I think that like skinwalkers and wendigos are kind of the same. They're not, but for some reason. Anyways, okay, I'll read I'll I'll read the Wendigo story then. I can see the actual book, but I can't I'm very my eyes. I need eyes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the music, okay? Yes. Dead. <laughs> Focused on my candles, huh? Okay. The Wendigo. A wealthy man wanted to go hunting in a part of northern Canada where a few people had ever hunted. Oh, good. We're in Canada. He traveled to a trading post and tried to find a guide to take him, but no one would do it. It was too dangerous, they said. Finally, he found an Indian who needed money badly, and he agreed to take him. The Indian's name was Defago. They made camp in the snow near a large frozen lake. For three days they hunted, but they had nothing to show for it. The third night a windstorm came up. They lay in their tent listening to the wind howling and the trees whipping back and forth. To see the storm better, the hunter opened the tent flap. What he saw startled him. There wasn't a breath of air stirring and the trees were standing perfectly still. Yet he could hear the wind howling. And the more he listened, the more it sounded as if it were calling Defago's name. Defago, it called. Defago. I must be losing my mind, the hunter thought. But Defago had gotten out of his sleeping bag. He was huddled in the corner of the tent, his head buried in his arms. What's this all about? the hunter asked. It's nothing, Defago said. But the wind continued to call him, and Defago became more tense and more restless. Defago, it called. Defago. Suddenly, he jumped to his feet, and he began to run from the tent. The hunter grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground. You can't leave me out here, the hunter shouted, and the wind called again, and Defago broke loose and ran into the darkness. The hunter could hear him screaming as he went. Again and again, he cried, Oh, my fiery, fiery feet, burning feet of fire and his voice faded away and the wind died down. At daybreak, the hunter followed Defago's tracks in the snow. They went through the woods, down towards the lake, and out onto the ice. But soon he noticed something strange. The steps Defago had taken had gotten longer and longer. It was so long no human being could have taken them. It was as if something had helped him to hurry away. The hunter followed the tracks out to the middle of the lake but there they disappeared. At first he thought that Defago had fallen through the ice, but there wasn't any hole. Then he thought that something had pulled him off the ice into the sky, but that made no sense. As he stood wondering what had happened, the wind picked up again. Soon it was howling, as it had the night before. Then he heard Defago's voice. It was coming from up above, and again he heard Defago screaming. My burning feet. But their fiery feet, there was nothing to be seen. 
Now the hunter wanted to leave that place as fast as he could. He went back to camp and packed. Then he left some food for Defego and he started out. Weeks later, he reached civilization. The following year, he went back to hunt that area again. He went to the same trading post to look for a guide. The people there could not explain what had happened to Defego that night, but they had not seen him since then. Maybe it was the Wendigo, one of them said, and he laughed. It's supposed to come with the wind. It drags you at great speed until your feet are burned away and more of you than that. Then it carries you to the sky and drops you. This is a crazy story, but that's what some of the Indians say. A few days later, the hunter was at the trading post. Again, an Indian came in and sat by the fire. He had a blanket wrapped around him, and he wore a hat that you couldn't see his face. The hunter thought there was something familiar about him. He walked over and he asked, Are you DeFego? The Indian didn't answer. Do you know anything about him? No answer. He began to wonder if there was something wrong with the man, but he couldn't see his face. Are you all right? He asked. No answer. To get a look at him, he lifted the Indian's hat. Then he screamed, There was nothing under the hat but a pile of ashes. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I don't know why, but that one used to freak me the heck out when I was younger, too. Alright? Um... Ooh, this one freaked me the fuck out, too. The white satin evening gown. I think I've read all of them more than once, because I have the book somewhere, but... Hold on. Slithery D came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Guys, we gotta read the babysitter. I was like, there's no way this story is that long. Okay. This one's really short, but it used to scare the bejesus out of me. All of these did, actually, so we'll just read them all. This one is the white satin evening gown. A young man invited a young woman to a formal dance, but she was very for poor, and she could not afford to buy the evening gown she needed for such an occasion. Maybe you can rent a dress, her mother said. So she went to a pawn shop not far from where she lived. There she found a white satin evening gown in her size. She looked lovely in it and was able to rent it for very little. When she arrived at the dance with her friend, she was so attractive, everyone wanted to meet her. She danced again and again and was having a wonderful time. But then she began to feel dizzy and faint. She asked her friend to take her home. I think I danced too much, she told him. When she got home, she lay down on her bed. The next morning, her mother found that her daughter had died. The doctor did not understand what had caused her death, so he had the coroner perform an autopsy. The coroner found she had been poisoned by embalming fluid. It had stopped her blood from flowing. There were traces of the fluid on her dress. He decided it had entered her skin when she perspired while she was dancing. The pawnbroker said he had bought the dress from an undertaker's helper. It had been used in a funeral parlor for another young woman, and the helper had stolen it just before she was buried. That doesn't make any sense, though. How would there be embalming fluid on the dress? Because I'm pretty sure... I mean, I don't know about then, but nowadays, I'm pretty sure that they... do all that while you are naked, and then they dress you once everything's done. So I don't even think that that could happen. But of course, when you're a little kid, I didn't even know what embalming fluid was when I was younger. So, <laughs> but I remember being like, oh, that's scary. Same with the one that talks about uh, the girl that's from the grave where she plunges a knife into it. Uh, I'll That one's here somewhere. I'll find it and I'll read it to you guys, but weird. 
This one high beams, even though I've never, I hadn't driven at the time, uh, scared the bejesus out of me too. The babysitter, I love that story. I don't know why it's so spooky, but it is. Okay. This one is high beam. The girl driving the old blue sedan was a senior at high school. She lived on a farm about eight miles away and used the car to drive back and forth. She had driven into town that night to see a basketball game. Now she was on her way home. As she pulled away from the school, she noticed a red pickup truck follow her out of the parking lot. A few minutes later, the truck was still behind her. I guess we're going the same direction, she thought. She began to watch the truck in her mirror. When she changed her speed, the driver of the truck changed his speed. When she passed a car, so did he. Then he turned on his high beam, flooding her car with light. He left them on for almost a minute. He probably wants to pass me, she thought, but she was becoming uneasy. Usually she drove home over a back road. Not too many people went that way. But when she turned onto that road, so did the truck. I've got to get away from him, she thought, and she began to drive faster. Then he turned his high beams on again. After a minute, he turned them off. And he turned them on again and off again. He drove even faster, but the truck driver stayed right behind her. Then she, he turned his high beams on again. Once more, her car was ablaze with light. What is he doing? She wondered. What does he want? Then he turned them off again. Mwah. Hi, Runes. Once more, her car was ablaze with light. Oh, I said that already. Sorry. But he left them on. As she pulled into her driveway, the truck pulled right in behind her. She jumped from her car and ran to the house. Call the police, she screamed at her father. Out in the driveway, she could see the driver of the truck. He had a gun in his hand. When the police arrived, they started to arrest him, but he pointed at the girl's car. You don't want me, he said. You want him. Crouched behind the driver's seat, there was a man with a knife. As the driver of the truck explained it, the man slipped into the girl's car just before she left school. He saw it happen, but there was no way he could stop it. He thought about getting the police, but he was afraid to leave her. So he followed her car. Each time the man in the back seat reached up over, reached up to overpower her, the driver of the truck turned on his high beams. Then the man dropped down, afraid that someone might see him. That one used to scare the bejesus out of me, and it's still why I check my back seat of my car, especially at night, especially alone, because I ain't about to die. Because not everybody is as nice as this man to follow this girl because of that. You guys all know the babysitter story, right? <laughs> Freaks me out. You guys probably all know the baby story or the babysitter story, but I'm gonna read it to you anyway. You sat on a baby? Well, shit. Okay. The babysitter. Thank you for the head pass runes. It was nine o'clock in the evening. Everyone was sitting on the couch in front of the TV. There were Richard, Brian, Jenny, and Doreen, the babysitter. The telephone rang. Maybe it's your mother, said Doreen. She picked up the phone, but before she could say a word, a man laughed hysterically and hung up. Who was it? asked Richard. Some nut, said Doreen. What did I miss? At 9.30, the telephone rang again. Oh dear. Okay, runes, are you ready? <laughs> hey, Sammy. Reading spooky stories. Except I wanted to read Reddit spooky stories, but apparently we're not allowed to do that, so. Okay. <clears throat> There you go. <laughs> Yay, Sammy was watching. Oh shit. Yeah, that's fair. I know you're at work. It's okay. How's work going today? Do you like my creepy story reading while you work? <laughs> Um, 
At 9.30, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. It was the man who had called before. I'll be there soon, he said. And he laughed and hung up. Who was it? The children asked. Some crazy person, she said. It's fine. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Right? Ooh, Swedish meatballs. Yummy. She said, about 10 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Then he got to it first. Hello, she said. It was the same man. One more hour, he said, and he laughed and hung up. He said one more hour. What did he mean? Asked Jenny. Don't worry, said Doreen. Is somebody fooling around? I'm scared, said Jenny. About 10.30, the telephone rang once more. When Doreen picked it up, the man said, pretty soon now, and he laughed. Why are you doing this? Doreen screamed, and he hung up. Was it that guy again? asked Brian. Yes, said Doreen. I'm going to call the operator and complain. The operator told her to call back if it happened again, and she would trace the call. At 11 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. Very soon now, the man said, and he laughed and hung up. Doreen called the operator. Almost at once, she called back. That person is calling from a telephone upstairs, she said. You better leave. I'll get the police. Then a door upstairs opened. The man had never, a man that they had never seen before started down the stairs towards them. As they ran from the house, he was smiling in a very strange way. A few minutes later, the police found him there and arrested him. Oh, that one used to freak me the fuck out too. And I still think about it when like, I used to pet sit. So like, when I was pet sitting and I was in like this unknown house to me, or like kind of unknown house to me, and stuff. Uh, oh god, it used to creep me out. Okay, so this one's funny. I'll, re I'll read you guys this one. It's very short, but it's funny. Spooky, but funny. A widow lived alone on the top floor of an apartment house. One morning, her telephone rang. Hello, she said. This is the Viper, a man said. I'm coming up. Somebody's fooling around, she thought, and hung up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mia, you throwing things at me. I'm all in the mood. You just scared the shit out of me. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Oh, you call me Kawaii? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> That's not good. You got a cold or? I'm doing okay. I just got over being sick not that long ago. We're doing some spooky story readings because uh, I promised I didn't I didn't realize that you had to ask permission on Reddit. So I think it's stupid. I think that if you uh, I think that if you like read the story name and say who posted it, that that should be enough. But yep, apparently you have to private message them for permission. Old fever, cough, aww. It's not COVID, that's good. You say, you, you, like, obviously I call you Mia, but do you say your full name, Mia Kirimu? I probably said that so bad. Kirimu? I feel like I fucked it up. <laughs> I mean, I always call you Mia, but... Oh! Nice! That's cute! Creamy. <laughs> Half hour later, the telephone rang again. It was the same man. <laughs> it's the Viper, he said. I'll be up soon. 
The widow didn't know what to think, but she was getting frightened. <laughs> Who, me? Nah. I'm not a tease. I'm not sussy. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -mm. Not me. Couldn't be me. Not your vampire waifu. <laughs> Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what of it? <laughs> we praise the booba around here, okay? Especially if Wolf is here, then we really do. <laughs> He's the sus spot of the channel. <laughs> right, guys? I think Weevil has one of Melody with a nosebleed. Uh, once more the telephone rang. Again, it was the Viper. Ah, Jesus. Sorry. That works. <laughs> My kitties. I'm coming up now, he said. She quickly called the police. She said they would be right over. When the doorbell rang, she sighed with belief. They're here, she thought. But when she opened the door, there stood a little old man with a bucket and a cloth. I am the viper, he said. I wish to wop, wash and wipe your windows. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. It's the viper. I wish to wash and wipe your windows. <laughs> the window viper. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. There you go, runes. Let's see what else there is. Ooh. So much for the damn suspense. <laughs> I know, right? It's a very short story. You guys know the ghost with bloody fingers, right? Bloody fingers! That's such a good story, oh my god. Okay. It's funny, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Because I can. Oh shit. You nasty! <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you for the head pets, Mia. Okay. A businessman arrived at a hotel late one night and asked for a room. The room clerk told him the hotel was all filled up. There's only one empty room, he said, but we don't rent that one because it is haunted. I'll take it, said the businessman. I don't believe in ghosts. He went up to the room and packed his things and he went to bed. As soon as he did, a ghost came out of the closet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's throwing things at me. His fingers were bleeding. And he was moaning. Bloody fingers. Bloody fingers. When the man saw the ghost, he grabbed his things and ran. The next night, a woman arrived very late. Again, all the rooms were taken except the haunted room. I'll sleep there, she said. I'm not afraid of ghosts. As soon as she got into bed, the ghost came out of the closet. His fingers were still bleeding. It still was moaning. Bloody fingers. Bloody fingers. The woman took one look and ran. <laughs> it scared me too. <laughs> a week later, another guest arrived very late. He also took the haunted room. After he unpacked, he got out his guitar and began to play. Soon the ghost appeared. As before, his fingers were bleeding and it was moaning. Bloody fingers. Bloody fingers. The man paid no attention. He, get he just kept strumming his guitar. The ghost kept moaning and its fingers kept bleeding. Finally, the guitar player looked up. Cool it, man, he said. Get yourself a band-aid. I don't know why, but I love that one so much because this ghost is like, help me, I'm bleeding. And everyone's like, oh my God, that's terrifying. And then this musician is just like, bro, fix yourself, man. Get a band-aid. I like it.
There's a, I swear there was another like spooky one. The scary stories to tell in the dark has a few that are like scary. And then. Oh yeah, okay, so the girl who stood on the grave is like another one of my favorite ones. So we're gonna, I'm gonna read it to you guys, because why not? And I guess from now on, I'll have to uh, ask people if I can read their stories on streams or in videos uh, as long as I credit them or whatever. So I guess I'll have to do that. <laughs> Damn your emotes are cute. Okay, the girl who stood on a grave. Some boys and girls were at a party one night. There was a graveyard down the street and they were talking about how scary it was. Never stand on a grave after dark, one of the boys said. The person inside will grab you. He'll pull you under. That's not true, one of the girls said. It's just a superstition. I'll give you a dollar if you stand on a grave, said the boy. The grave doesn't scare me, said the girl. I'll do it right now. The boy handed her his knife. Stick this knife in one of the graves, he said, then we'll know you were there. The graveyard was filled with shadows and was as quiet as death. There's nothing to be scared of, the girl told herself, but she was scared anyway. She picked out a grave and stood on it. Then quickly she bent over and plunged the knife into the soil and started to leave. But she couldn't get away. Something was holding her back. She tried a second time to leave, but she couldn't move. She was filled with terror. Something has got me, she screamed, and she fell to the ground. When she didn't come back, the others went to look for her. They found her body scrawled across the grave. Without realizing it, she had punched the knife through her skirt and pinned it to the ground. It was only the knife that held her. She had died of fright. That used to scare the shit out of me, too. When I read it at first, not knowing that, you know... Uh... Not knowing that she had plunged the knife through her skirt. But this is scared the shit out of me. Most of these stories did, and I think it was more so like the pictures. Like the pictures in this book are spooky. Is she stupid? Yeah. I mean, why would you I figured she got her cause caught on something or stabbed her foot? I mean, I feel like if she stabbed her foot, she'd know. The pictures are so creepy. Um, I think it's the thing is the name of the story. It's horrifying. Like the eyes are so creepy. Yeah, a foot would definitely be more obvious unless you like shoved it through your shoe or something. But I feel like you'd notice that. Honestly, I feel like you would feel it even if you put it through your clothes, but I guess Adrenaline is a thing, and if you're spooked or scared, it can change things for sure. Also, this a, a new horse one uh, used to scare the bejesus enemy, so I'll read you this one too. And then I'm going to start going through Reddit stories when I can. And I guess I will start PMing people and asking them if I can use their stories. Because I would like to do more of these if this is something you guys thought... Um, if you guys think that you'd like more of these type of streams where they're just short little streams of me reading spooky shit, I can do that. Publisher did a reprint later and the artwork they used was decidedly less scary. I mean, I like this artwork a lot better. But that's also why I'm confused as to why it's like supposedly for kids. Oh, you do? Yay! See, Dead I suggested that because when I ran out of clips for TikTok and like YouTube shorts, I didn't know what else to do because I don't really, you know, I focus on being spooky because that's my content is all spooky stuff. And so it was kind of one of those things where I was like, well, I guess I could read horror stories, but people didn't really like it as much. Like, I get more views on my clips of getting scared than I do of reading, but if you guys really like this, then we can do it. Maybe we can experiment with different, like, sounds in the background. Instead of spooky music, we can do, like, rain or something, or, like, 
really light spooky music or something. You know? Yeah, sliding into DMs, that's me. Okay, so this one's called a new horse. What happens if I view it in full screen? Wow, that looks just like my book too. Okay, I might be able to read them better like this, actually. The big toe. Oh god. Oh, this is giving me such like nostalgia, but it's fucking creepy. Oh god, there's the thing. Ugh. Okay, do you guys want me to read you the thing first and then I'll do the new horse because I just lost my spot. Oh, is there? Can I read those? I'm assuming because it's called free. Thank you, Miss Leafy. Much, much appreciated. I appreciate your lurk very much. It's royalty free, which means I should be able to use them without DMing, right? Or PMing or whatever, whatever it's called. Thank you for the head pets, Mia. Are you guys sure the music isn't too loud? I feel like it's so loud. Okay, so this is the thing. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. Oh shit, hold on. I know, right? It is kind of dead by daylighty. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near the post office talking about one thing and another. There was a field of termit turnips across the road. Suddenly they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up. It looked like a man, but in the dark it was hard to tell for sure. Then it was gone. But soon it appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then it turned around and went back to the field. Yeah, I kind of wondered, Weevil. Get. Then it came out a third time and started towards them. By now, Ted and Sam were scared, and they started running. When they finally stopped, they decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what had scared them, so they decided to go back and get a better look. Pretty soon, they saw it, but it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm going to try and chuck it, touch it, then we'll know if it's real. He walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating eyes sunken deep in its head. It looked like a skeleton. Ted took one look and screamed, and again he and Sam ran, but this time the skeleton followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while, then it disappeared. A year later, Ted got sick and died. Toward the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam said he looked just like the skeleton. Hello, Cos. Yeah, we're, I'm trying to um, do goals that um, we haven't done yet since... Um, since reading or since my subathon like a month ago um and i'm gonna be doing another subathon um at the end of the year here for new year's so i want to try and get some of the goals done so that we can figure it out you sent me a dm okay Thanks, Dada. I'll have to look into it for sure.
What's unacceptable? Is being mean to me? Yeah. So I just figured we get rid of some of them and one of them, uh... Oh, Weevil. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I figured it'd be good to get some of the stuff done with. And one of them was reading horror stories. And according to Deadeye, I have a nice voice. So I decided that I'd read you some spooky shit and use my spooky voice. <coughs> Except it kind of hurts every once in a while when I need hydration. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. Much appreciated. Hydrated, hydrated. Thanks for the headbutt, Shadows. Did I do be do know what they be talking about? Well, thank you. Rawr. <laughs> you go, Shadows. <laughs> okay, let me find the new horse one because that one's spooky. I feel like these are not as spooky as I remember them being, but also I was a child when I read these, so, you know. There it is. <laughs> okay. A new horse. <laughs> you want to make a blurp of my sassy roar? I mean, okay. Go for it. Remind me one day and I'll turn off all other... Actually, I'll just... I'll just record it, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> Two farmhands shared a room. One slept at the back of the room. The other slept near the door. After a while, the one who slept near the door began to feel very tired early in the day. His friend asked what was wrong. An awful thing happens every night. He said, a witch turns me into a horse and rides me all over the countryside. I'll sleep in your bed tonight, his friend said. We'll see what happens to me. About midnight, an old woman who lived nearby came into the room. She mumbled some strange words over the farmhand, and he found he couldn't move. Then she slipped a bridle on him, and he turned into a horse. The next thing he knew, she was riding him across the fields at breakneck speed beating him to make him go even faster. Soon they came to a house where a party was going on. There was a lot of music and dancing. They were having a big time inside. Is that English? She hitched him to a fence and went in. While she was gone, the farmhand runs against the fence until the bri bridle came off and he turned back into a human being. Then he went into the house and found the witch. He spoke those strange words over her and with the bridle, he turned her into a horse. Then he rode her to the blacksmith and had her fitted with horseshoes. After that, he rode her to the farm where she lived. I am a pretty good filly here, he told her husband, but I need a stronger horse. Would you like to trade? The man looked over her and said he would do it. So they picked out another horse and the farm had rode away. Her husband led his new horse to the barn. He took off the bridle and went to hang it up. When he came back, the new horse was gone. Instead, there stood his wife with horseshoes nailed to her hands and feet. That's what he said? Reminds me of the dinosaur memes with the Jurassic Park. Let's go. Wait, everyone is riding everyone else? Yes. As horses, we will. As horses. Oh, fuck off, auto mod. I get fucked. <laughs> Literally. Sorry, Mia. Auto mod is stupid. <laughs> we did. <laughs> All three of us did. Um, let me actually click on it and see.
It doesn't say for the first one that I can't read it, so that's a thing. None of these say that you can't um, read them. So that actually might be really helpful. Unless I get to the actual thing and it says that I can't, but... Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Do you think you guys would rather creepy music or would you rather like rain or something in the background? Or does that make you sleepy? Like, I know I listen to spooky stories with rain in the background to fall asleep, but... You want me to try it right now? Yeah, about half an hour left that I can read you guys stuff. Let's try it. Find some rain sounds. I'm not gonna put for sleeping. No copyright rain sounds? You need you can copyright rain sounds? Okay. There you go. Can you guys hear it? voice makes you fall asleep yeah I mean that's why I listen to the ones that I do for sure for sure can you guys hear it Let's try. I mean, this is literally from Creepypasta, and I feel like people read Creepypastas all the time. Ow. And it's not a problem. I'm just double checking that there's nothing anywhere that says that I can't. Oh yeah, there's stuff like Ben Drowned and stuff on here. So I feel like it'd be okay to read these. I guess we'll find out if it's not. <laughs> Thank you, Runes. I much, much appreciate that. I love you guys too.
Let's see. This one's from like a few days ago. Ooh, hold on. Is Tumblr still a thing? It is. I used to read like spooky shit on Tumblr all the time. Do people still use it? Okay. Well, that answers that question. I can't remember exactly now. It was like... I don't know. Twitterati? Dear God. Okay. Um, well, we're just going to try this one and see. You guys can hear the rain or no? I just want to double check. I mean, like, literally nothing says I can't read this, so. Um, and I'm sorry, but it's on the internet. Oh, there we go. Our property of to their respective authors and may not be narrated or performed under any circumstance. Never mind, I can't read them. <laughs> See? You can't, so yeah, I can't use creepypastas. I just don't understand if you put something on the internet, especially if it's like a story, I don't get why you wouldn't just be fine with people narrating it. Like it might even get you, your story more viewed or whatever. Okay, but like i i don't care i mean i know everybody's different but it's just kind of frustrating like how to how do the people that i listen to get all their stories is what i want to know Like, if it's a life story, like, something that actually happened to them, I can totally understand. But if it's just, like, a random story that they made up, I'm not narrating it or trying to use it in a bad way. You know? Let me just click on one of these and see if I'm allowed to read them. I'm just reading to see if there's something that says I can't. Maybe I need to start doing that. I mean, doing research for the podcast and stuff, it's a lot that goes into it. I was watching other people. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that they have to ask permission for. Yeah, I know. But like, that's why I want to talk about like our experiences and stuff with stuff, Sammy, more so because then people can't copyright that or can't say that we can't talk about that because that's our experiences. 
you know. Like, I don't see anything on this site that says I can't read them, but now I'm nervous to read anything without asking permission. I just think it's dumb if you are posting a story online. I just feel like you should be allowed to... Like, other people should be allowed to narrate it, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. But then again, I guess if I created some sort of content and somebody was reading it, then I might be upset. I don't know. <laughs> we are... We are the same brain sometimes, gaming wifey. Yeah, I guess. I just don't... I don't know. Oh yeah, totally. And I know that it is, but... I don't know. Like, you're putting it on the internet. If you don't want other people to read it or steal it, don't put it on the internet. Kind of how I feel about it. Again, I can't really say that because I'm a creator myself. So, like, I get it. But... Like, I just... It's one of those things where it's like, I just... I don't get... Like, one of the girls I watch, she lives in my hometown. And she reads stories, but people send her stories. So it's like, okay, well, they're sending her stories, so therefore they're giving her permission to read it. So I get that. Um, but like people like Southern Cannibal and Let's Read and Interscare Sleep and like all these people, like where, where do they get their stories from? But like that's the thing is they also have a lot of... Uh, a lot of followers so i guess that's also a, a thing but i don't know this one's a blog so like it doesn't say that i can't read them um My friends and a lot of YouTubers' VODs get uploaded while we have no idea of it. And I tried to email them and I got no reply. I mean, like, stuff like that is different. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I wish that there was people that made, like, that made stories that were copyright free that you could just read. Just like they do with, like, music and stuff like that. But I also get that, like, that means that they can't make money on it either. Or, like, they can if you use, like, a, a subscription or something. Uh, but... I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out. Because, like, Lena reads scary stories all the time, too. And I'm like, where are you getting all these stories from? Oh, shit. I didn't think of that, Mia. You're smart. Does that count as copyright? <laughs> I mean, like, a lot of these I've heard people say that they, like, just found them online. Huh. Just chat GPT a scary story. I don't know. I just feel like when it comes to stories or anything, as long as you credit a person, I feel like that should be okay. Like, if somebody used my clips in something or whatever, as long as they credited me or said, like, hey, go check out this person or whatever, I think I'd be okay with it. It really depends on what they're using it for, I suppose. But, like, if it was just innocent, like, stuff. 
but I don't know. I don't know. That's why I had the um, the book open because I'm like, well, it's a book. You know. Mia. I still have that window open. Let's see what other ones there are. You guys know the hook? Well, I guess I just just means I have to go on Reddit and DM people and get permission. That's just what I'll have to do. I'm assuming you guys know the story, but, uh, I'm gonna read it anyway. Okay. I'm sure you guys know the story. The hook? You don't know the story of the hook? I'll read it and see if you, if it jogs your memory, Mia. It's one of those popular ones. I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't know it. That's allowed. I just was thinking. Okay. <clears throat> Donald and Sarah went to the movies. Then they went for a ride in Donald's car. They parked up on a hill at the edge of town from where they could see the lights up and down the valley. Donald turned on the radio and found some music, but an announcer broke in with a news bulletin. A murderer had escaped from a state prison. Murderer, sorry. He was armed with a knife and was headed south on foot. His left hand was missing. In its place, he wore a hook. Let's roll up the windows and lock the doors, said Sarah. That's a good idea, said Donald. That prison isn't too far away, said Sarah. Maybe we should really go home. But it's only 10 o'clock, said Donald. I don't care what time it is, she said. I want to go home. Look, Sarah, said Donald. He's not going to climb all the way up here. Why would he even do that? Even if he did, all the doors are locked. How could he get in? Donald, he could take that hook and break through the window and open a door, she said. I'm scared. I want to go home. 
Donald was a noise. Girls are always afraid of something. First of all, fuck you, Donald. As he started the car, Sarah thought she heard something. Or someone scratching at her door. Did you hear that? She asked as they roared away. It sounded like somebody was trying to get in. Oh, sure, said Donald. Soon they got to her house. Would you like to come in and have some cocoa? She asked. No, he said. I've got to go home. He went around to the other side of the car to let her out. Hanging on the door handle was a hook. Dun dun dun! You've never heard that story before? Sweet free hook. I'm safe at home. You've never heard that one? I heard it, I think, even before um, reading it in this book, but it's a pretty old, creepy story. I read that one already. I read that one already. I read that one already. This one's funny, but I'll read it anyway for the heck of it. This one's called The Attic. Fair enough. A man named Rupert lived with his dog in a house deep in the woods. Rupert was a hunter and a trapper. The dog was a big German shepherd named Sam. Rupert had raised Sam from a pup. Almost every morning, Rupert went hunting, and Sam stayed behind and guarded the house. One morning, as Rupert was checking his traps, he got a feeling that something was wrong at home. He hurried back as fast as he could, but when he got there, he found that Sam was missing. He searched the house and the woods nearby, but Sam was nowhere to be seen. He called and called, but the dog did not answer. For days, Rupert looked for Sam, but he could find no trace of him. Finally, he gave up and went back to his work, but one morning, he heard something moving in the attic. He picked up his gun. Then he thought, I'd better be quiet about this. So he took off his boots, and in his bare feet, he began to climb the attic stairs. Slowly, he took one step, then another, then another, until at last he reached the attic door. He stood outside listening, but didn't hear a thing. He opened the door and, ah! And then people are supposed to ask, why did he scream? You'd scream too if you stepped on a nail in your bare, in your bare feet. <laughs> You're fine. You don't need to feel dumb. It's totally fine. A slithery D came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. Uh, man. I don't know why, but the wait till Martin comes one freaks the fuck out of me, and I don't know why. It's stupid, like it's funny. I'll read it to you guys, but like... <clears throat> An old man was out for a walk. When a storm came up, he looked for a place to take shelter. Soon he came to an old house. He ran up on the porch and knocked on the door, but nobody answered. By now, rain was pouring down, thunder was booming, and lightning was flashing. So he tried the door. When he found it, it was unlocked, he went inside. Except for a pile of wooden boxes, the house was empty. He broke up some of the boxes and made a fire with them. He sat down in front of the fire and dried himself. It was so warmy, warm, warmy, Jesus, warm and cozy that he fell asleep. When he woke up, a black cat was sitting near the fire. He stared at him for a while, then it purred. That's a nice cat, he thought, and he dozed off again. When he opened his eyes, there was a second cat in the room. This one was as big as a wolf. It looked at him very closely, and it asked, Shall we do it now? No, said the other cat. Let's wait till Martin comes. I must be dreaming, thought the old man. He closed his eyes again, but then he took another look. There was now a third cat in the room, 
This one was as big as a tiger. It looked the men over, and it asked, Shall we do it now? No, said the others. Let's wait till Martin comes. The old man jumped up, jumped out the window, and started running. When Martin comes, you tell him I couldn't wait, he called. <laughs> Shall we do it now? No, let's wait till Martin comes. Uh, bloody fingers. We don't know who Martin is. Yeah. Is this the first chapter? Nope. Mia, do you know the big toe story let me enlighten you <laughs> and anyone else of course i'm glad i'm glad that i can give you some content <laughs> okay the big toe a boy was digging at the edge of the garden when he saw a big toe he tried to pick it up but it was stuck to something. So he gave it a good hard jerk and it came off in his hand. Then he heard something groan and scamper away. The boy took the toe to the kitchen and showed it to his mother. It looks nice and plump, she said. I'll put it in the soup and we'll have it for supper. That night, his father carved the toe into three pieces and they each had a piece. Then they did the dishes and when it got dark, they went to bed. The boy fell asleep almost at once, but in the middle of the night, a sound awakened him. It was something out in the street. It was a voice, and it was calling to him. Where is my toe? It groaned. When the boy heard that, he got very scared, but he thought, it doesn't know where I am. It'll never find me. Then he heard the voice once more, only now it was closer. Where is my toe? It groaned. The boy pulled the blankets over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it'll be gone. But soon he heard the back door open, and again he heard the voice. Where is my toe? It groaned. Then the boy heard footsteps move through the kitchen into the dining room, into the living room, into the front hall. And they slowly climbed the stairs. Closer and closer they came. Soon they were in the upstairs hall. Now they were outside his door. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. His door open, shaking with fear. He listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark towards his bed. Then they stopped. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. You've got it. I ate it and I'll eat you too. Oh shit. Apparently it has another ending. Um, when the voice hears the voice, when the boy hears the voice calling for his toe, he finds a strange looking creature up inside the chimney. The boy is so frightened he can't move. He finally stares at it and says, what big eyes you have for to look you through and through what you got such big claws for to scratch up your grave. What you got such a big mouth for to swallow you whole. What you got such sharp, sharp teeth for to chomp your bones. I didn't know it had two endings, but there you go. Spooky, right? The second one was better. You think so? Now I can scare someone's kid. Oh my god. Oh, there you go. 
I am the power. Okay, I'm gonna read one more. It's called The Haunted House, and then I'm gonna have to leave y'all for the day. I gotta go get ready for work. But this one is called The Haunted House. One time a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. The house had been haunted for about 10 years. Several people had tried to stay there all night. But they would always get scared out by the haunt. Damn it, Mia. <laughs> so this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire and lit a lamp sat there reading the Bible. Then just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked off. And there was a lot of thrashing and struggling and finally everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob turn, and when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? The door shut back easy-like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went to, the men to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking up again, step, 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 up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn, and the door open. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, who are you? What do you want? The haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do, then just faded out. The old preacher waited and waited, and when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating, sweating and trembling all over. But he was a brave man, and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch, and sat down and waited. It wasn't long, long before he heard the haunt start up again. Slowly, step, 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 closer and closer, step, step. And it was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. Then the knob slowly turned, and the door opened wide. This time the preacher spoke quiet like he said in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost who are you and what do you want the haunt came right across the room straight to him and took a hold of his coat it was a young woman about 20 years old her hair was torn and tangled her flesh was dropping off her face so he could see the bones and part of her teeth she had no eyeballs but there was a sort of blue light way back in her eye sockets. she had no nose to her face then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing it. She told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of the little finger from her left hand to lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting and he fi he'd find out who murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight, and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired and sunk down towards the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried, him buried her in the graveyard. Next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at that bone, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house one midnight, and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth, hearth rock. He did, and he found a big sack of money. And where the haunt held on to his coat, the print of the bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. I like that story, actually. I like that she was like, everyone was too scared, and he's like, no, no, I'm going to figure this out for you. And so he does. 
and then you know like i think that's nice you know he helped her right yeah kind of wholesome well unfortunately that is gonna have to be it for me today because i have to go get ready for work but i appreciate you guys thanks for hanging out and chilling with me mia thanks for coming and saying hello this is my uh temporary uh model i have her she's customizable so uh she is hi gray she is um this is my vampire obviously i have my wolf and then i have a mermaid as well <laughs> thanks mia i probably will i really like how her mouth moves and stuff I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, tomorrow we'll do something. I don't know what it is yet. Tomorrow is Thursday, right? Today is Wednesday. Is today Wednesday? <laughs> oh God, if today's Wednesday, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I will. You too, Mia. You too. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, did I? I'm like, I don't know what day it is. I don't, I don't know anything. I don't know these things. I will try to have a good day at work, but um, I cannot promise that I will, but I will try. <laughs> you only know because it's trash day. Nice, did I? It's a good way to remember what day it is, I guess. Totally fair. Well, well, like I said, um, I think, um, hold on one second. I can tell you, Mia, I can tell you one second. Yes, Aqua? Hear me out? Um, like 30 bucks, I think. Yes. Yeah, pretty good. And she's customizable. You can change. Actually, hold on. Before I go anywhere, let me show you Mia. We got, I can have a jacket. The wings I added, the wings and tail uh, are like pinned to me, by the way. It has nothing to do with the model. We can change my pants. So like right now I'm wearing a skirt. We can change it to jean shorts. Uh, we can change them to leggings. And change my hair. We can make it shorter. Uh. You guys make me blush. <laughs> I can toggle my wings on and off. Maybe I might have broke it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I'm angry. <laughs> yeah. Kind of fun. Hot and short. <laughs> I like being. I like I like long hair, but that's because I like my actual hair long. So you know, it comes hand in hand, I guess.
<laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's it. That's all for today. I appreciate you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed. My cat is adorable behind me. On her back with all of her feet in the air. Like the goofball that she is. <laughs> yeah, thank you for hanging out. Much appreci. I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks, Cos, for coming by. I appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all tomorrow. I have games I have to play. Uh... So I did Horror Stories. Um... We did The Redeem. I don't know, we might just watch spooky videos, or maybe, um, react to great TikToks or something, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out, we'll see, we'll see what we're doing, but you guys have a great rest of your day, I'll see y'all tomorrow, and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys all have a great day, bye bye